applicants to support their membership applications to the DAR. She's currently working on a project about World War II military camps in the area, as well as completing a book about a local cemetery. She recently presented at her first history conference this past summer. Julie writes the blog Putting Clothes on Tombstones and spends a lot of time reading newspapers and town minutes from the late 1700s from Newburyport, Massachusetts, where her ancestors originally served in the Revolutionary War. And she has learned the difference between the occupations of Cooper, Hoggreave, and Hayward. Julie and her husband live on a grain, hog, and cattle farm in western Illinois. Her three grandchildren, Jordan, Regan, and Ellis, keep her very busy. And now I'd like to introduce Julie Terstrip. Hello, everyone. I hope you had a, a good morning. And uh, I feel like I need to sit like this. <laughs> Welcome to the study. Uh, I'm very excited this afternoon to bring our guest in. Uh, and a lot of you have got to meet him. And so we'll introduce him first, and, and we'll go from there. So our guest is Chris Donnell. Come on up, Chris. comfortable in this chair here. We made it. We made it. <laughs> we made it this far, yeah. Chris is from Dundee, Scotland, but went to Glasgow, I believe, correct? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, drama school in Glasgow, the uh, Royal Conservatoire of Scotland, yeah. And graduated with honors? Apparently, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean... <laughs> that's what it said anyway, uh, Yeah, right? that's what it said on the, the certificate they give you, but like... Thank I'm you, not publicist. <laughs> Those publicists uh, do amazing work, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I told him, I filled him in that we, he has a, a really difficult thing to fill in with as far as Ed, and he ha we have some expectations of him, so <laughs> we'll go I'm so that. sorry. Like, I said to Debs, like, I'm going to let you down here. This, if you want a refund, it's on my dime. <laughs> it's, I'm so sorry. We'll go into that a lot more later. <laughs> um, but... Some of the interesting things we were discussing earlier is, um, you and I were talking earlier about, were you, what were you like in school? So if, if it says here, Ed was, uh, our, Ed, geez, I'm sorry, Chris was, <laughs> go ahead, you can give Ed a shout out and be like, he's a hey. Great, he's, 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 yeah, he's a good, he's a, yeah, he's, he's all right, he's all right. Yeah, we'll get even with him a little bit later right. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chris is an accomplished actor who has uh, honors, uh, degree, but what did your teacher say about you in grade school? What did they not say? Uh, so, I mean, I went to high school just to talk to girls, really, and uh, um, that, didn't, that didn't do me well. <laughs> apparently, apparently, you've got to actually like learn stuff. Um, yeah, no, I got detention a lot. I was a, cl a class clown. Is that is that does that make sense? Yeah, that, that like, translates. So, like. If there was an opportunity to like make someone laugh, I would go for it. I would just go for it, yeah. And uh, would not hesitate. But yeah, that. So I guess that was kind of like uh, probably the f fundamentally kind of the uh, the the seeds that kind of grew the kind of actor in me. I think if I was to be that self-aware, <laughs> um, I, I think so. I think so. Yeah, I didn't. I just. I was always like. It's just a massive attention seeker, I think. I think. <laughs> and yeah, uh, after getting detention enough, eventually the guy, I remember my, my guidance counselor, uh, Mrs. Ward, God bless, Miss, Mrs. McGregor, sorry, sorry, that was, that was, my, that was someone else. Uh, Mrs. McGregor was my, uh, was my guidance counselor, and she sat me down, and my mum, and she said, right, you need, to, you need to speak to this boy. Um, he, he's not, he's not meant for academics. <laughs> he's, uh, he's, 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 he's different, he's different, he's weird. Uh, <laughs> a little bit special. <laughs> Teachers are well known yeah, for doing yeah, things like Yeah, but that. you know what though, like God bless them because they obviously, she's, she obviously knew 
I don't know, like what, what I was supposed to do and what I was, mm -hmm. and um, I'm very grateful for that because uh, I, I, I remember like my parents asking me, what do you want to do? Like what, what, what career do you want to do? And I, I, never, I never really gave them an answer. I never really thought about it and it was never something that I um, uh, thought about. And I know that sounds weird because I think a lot of, I think a lot of people are very ambitious and I just, I wasn't, um, I know I, I wasn't someone that kind of had any ambition, and I know, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm just being honest about that. I didn't, I didn't. I just, I just lived life day by day, and I still kind of do. And now I'm here in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing, though. Like, like, so carpe diem is really your yeah, oh, slogan. In yeah. Life. Oh yeah. 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 Okay, so you were telling me uh, your dad is Scottish and was in the military. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, he was a British soldier in the Scots Guards and he served in two, two tours of Belfast and one in the Falklands. So, yeah, he's, uh, I think he's mates with a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of dangerous people, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your mom is Italian. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how what that works. Yeah. Huh? Like, Scottish and Italian. Yeah, like, a, like, a, like a, a Protestant British soldier and an Italian Catholic. It's like, I've got no right to be here. <laughs> got, yeah. So, did you have things like uh, spaghetti with scotch eggs or? <laughs> yeah, well, well, this is the thing. Like, my mum's an amazing, ama like, my, like, my go-to meal. I've, I, I say this every time. Like, my uh, mum's lasagna is the best on the planet. It mm, has to be. Mm -hmm. But I think everyone should say that about their mum. I think mum, mum, mum's cooking is always the best. And if you, if, if I, I ju I'll actively judge someone if they don't big up their mum's home cooking. Like, you're, you're, you're clearly an asshole. Like, yeah. like so be good. Your mum, your mum's the most important woman in your life and should always be, so, yeah. Being a mom, I think moms are pretty special. So, yeah, you know, we kind of take care of everybody in the family. All right, well, we, real quick, we have a few questions I'm gonna throw at you from the crowd, but I got a whole lot more to ask, too. Um, Trisha Phelan wanted to know what you liked or disliked about your character, Philip Wiley, which, by the way, we need to say, first of all, that Diana says that Philip Wiley was an emboldened pursuer of older women and a horseman of some of steam. So, I am just saying. Guilty. <laughs> was it typecasting or not, huh? No. Really, on behalf of everyone that's here, though, we've really enjoyed uh, being able to have the time to visit with you. And I know you've said this feels like six Thursdays in a row. Yeah. Like, it's been Thursday for a week. Yeah. 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 But it's, it's nice when you're willing to share your time with us, and everybody's very appreciative it's, of that, it's right? Been, it's... The... Okay, so back to our question. What it's do you been, like? It's been my pleasure, though. It's been my absolute pleasure and my honor to be here. And I'm just, it's the, the, the love that I've received since I've been here is, uh, is, is, is something I'm going to take with me for the rest of my life. Thank you. Okay, so let's, let's skip that question real quick then because... Yeah, sorry, I didn't even answer your question. No, that's okay. Because yeah. it actually brought up something else I recall you telling me, that you have been here three times before. In the States, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you've yeah. been to? Uh, so the first time was uh, Miami, New York, and LA twice. Yeah. And the reason that you decided to come here was because you very specifically... But, but because, because I, I'm, uh, I don't agree with the term flyover state. I think it's very disrespectful. I think it's, uh, it's, um, it's, yeah, well. Um, I, I, uh, there's, there's, I don't think any state should be flown over unless you need to get somewhere. I mean, like, uh, well, that's, but you know, <laughs> You know, I mean, but what I'm saying is, like, uh, the, the middle America is, is um, I mean, this, this, is the, this is the area that feeds everyone else. You know, I mean, this country, yeah. this is, all, all the industry is made here. Um, and I think uh, you, you, guys are, you, you guys are America, as far as I'm concerned, because, like, the East Coast and the West Coast are, um, it's great. I had a great time there, but I've, I've had an even better time here. <laughs> so, yeah. 
In a way, the, the Midwest is kind of, in my perspective, thought of as the Scotland of the United States. You know, we're kind of yeah. like, you're part of us, but not, we don't really yeah. want to talk about uh, you that much, well, you know. That's, yeah, it couldn't be further from the truth in my experience, mm -hmm. because I've been, I've been here for two days, well, several Thursdays. <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's, it's been a blast. Like the, 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 I, I just, I love you guys. I think you're amazing. And I, I can't wait to come back. I You're welcome anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome yeah. anytime. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's get back to that notorious Philip Wiley then. Yes, yes, yes. So, so let's well, step back just a moment because that wasn't the only role that you had actually auditioned for, correct? Yes, yeah, so I did. So my first audition was in season two for the Count, the French, the French Count. What's his? Um, Comte Saint Germain. That's Stanley Weber. Right. And I got quite. I got a few recalls because I didn't. I mean, I can't speak a lick of French. Um, we. Oui. <laughs> um, and uh, and you didn't try to do what Dom did then and be like, oh yeah, I'll just follow what everybody else says. But, <laughs> well, this is the thing. So, but my, I've got a good friend that is half French and uh, is very fluent. And I basically just uh, studied and studied and studied because all all of my dialogue. I, I think I had um, a couple of scenes, and they were both with, with uh, both scenes were with Jamie. And um, I was like, right, okay, so if I get this part, I think I'm, I'm going to be working with Sam a lot. So I, 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 need to, I need to be on it. I need to be prepared. And even though I don't know why I've been given this audition, because presumably, I, I don't know, maybe I, like aesthetically I looked the part, I don't know. But um, I was just very aware that uh, I, there was, none of my dialogue was in English. <laughs> so I shot myself. Um, <laughs> Not, not literally. Uh, not literally, but, right, not literally. Okay. But I, I, did, I studied, I studied a lot because I knew I was, I was, uh, I was, I, I, I knew I was out my depth. But um, because it was an audition, I take every audition. I don't take myself seriously, obviously, as you can tell. But um, I take, the, I take the work very, very seriously. And um, I studied and studied and studied. Like I tried to, you know, it's not just about learning the, uh, you know, the language of what you're trying to say and then the inflections and the accent. It's, it's being the guy, like I want to arrive on the day of the audition in front of the director and the casting director and all the producers or whoever, I'm, whoever is at the panel, I do not want to waste their time because not many people, because there's so, there's so many actors, like this, this industry is inundated like with, with people that, are, that want to be at, and I, I was given an opportunity and it's, it would be very disrespectful not to, to, well, to, waste, to waste anyone's time, especially my own as well. Like, so I'm going to turn up and, and, try and try and nail it. And I think I did, I, I mean, I did, I did as good a job as I could, but um, obviously it didn't, go my, it, didn't, it didn't go my way. But I think that's why I kept on getting... So I think for season three, I auditioned for uh, one of the... Dub, was it Leslie, one of the double, the, the two Scottish guys? Um, mm -hmm. I think Keith, I think Keith okay. so, Keith, so Keith's a good friend of mine, I think he got it, but I think I was, I think I was too young for the part anyway, I think that's what they fundamentally said, but, but cause I think both characters were supposed to be like, probably in their late 30s or early 40s, probably early 40s, so it was, but the thing is when you get an audition, sometimes it will say 25 to 40, and I'm like, who, wh who are you looking for? <laughs> like, what, okay, but anyway, so, and then season four, obviously I got cast as, um, I finally went my way where I got cast as Philip. So then you got a call to try out for Philip Wiley. Yes, yes, yes. Which, and then I, I got the part, and I was like, really? What? <laughs> like, because it was, it was, because uh, the thing is, when, in an audition, because I know it's your one time to impress, and I can't speak about anyone else's job or career, but like, when an audition for an actor is like, it's, it's what puts bread on your, that, that, that could, that's what puts bread on your table and pays your rent and put clothes on your back. You know what I mean? That's, it's, you, you, ha you have to just throw it all out on the line. You, you, you have to, you have to. And uh, I, 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 you know, I, and I, I think I lost my mind because obviously Philip is such an, ex he was such a, uh, a flamboyant, Larger, yeah. Macaroni. Yeah. Yeah. Larger, <laughs> larger than life. I mean, that would be the best way to describe him. Just kind of like a larger than life. And, da and the thing about a dandy, like when you, when you, when you, as soon as I saw the word dandy, I was like, right, okay, so I'm basically playing like Russell Brand in the 17th century. <laughs> so, 
I, 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 for that 45 minutes in that audition room, I, I lost my mind. Yeah, yeah, and it paid off. Okay, so obviously Philip is not Scottish, and you have to have a different dialect. Mm. And so what's the process that you would go through to practice for something like that? Do you have a repertoire of different so, dialects? Hey, so there's a, a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, dialect coach uh, that, that we had, Hazel Ann Crawford, and um, I work with her very closely because we, well, she, she told me, because again, I, I uh, and in, in the UK, we, we have this, uh, especially in drama schools as well, we have this uh, a dialect called RP, like received pronunciation, but it's just basically, um, it's, it's kind of old fashioned, and I think um, it's, it, was, it was used a lot for like Shakespeare and um, like uh, Oliver Wilde plays. You know, a lot of kind of like older, older kind of uh, like stage, like mm -hmm. just kind of stage plays and all that, but, but I, I, I use that because, I, I just assume he's, he's, well, he's, I mean, Philip, as far as I'm aware, he's the first landed gentry, I guess you could say, like first generation American. Um, so the American accent was probably didn't exist. So I just kind of went with that and uh, I worked very close. And it was actually quite, because I thought I was, because even what I was doing, what, even what I brought, it was still not quite, cause it needed to be quite clipped. It was just a very, it's just way, and again, it's probably harder because I've got like a, a you know a quite a relatively thick Scottish accent. It was it was I, I, there was still a lot of work to kind of like really iron out the creases, if you want to put it that way. Um, because it's just so it was, just, it was so aristocratic and so kind of posh. Um, uh, thank you very much. Um, and not yeah. to interrupt you, but. Um, I believe we have these on our table. Do you guys see these? Okay, yeah, so if you would take the moment and we'll decorate ourselves in honor of our guest. I love purple. Purple's my favorite color, I love it. It's our beauty yeah. marks. Is it, is it pink actually? I'm, <laughs> I'm really hungover, I'm sorry. That's pink. It's pink. It's pink. <laughs> you're done with beauty marks. That's your one role you're going to do with a beauty mark. And I played Philip Wiley with a beauty mark. Do you want me? To, shall I put one on? Uh, you can if you. You know, I know you told me you had kind of a hang up about all that makeup. No, we'll do it. We'll do it. It probably took like 75 beauty marks just to get through all the. Shots that you <laughs> did. You have someone who was like, "Hi, I'm I'm the stunt coordinator for Beauty Marks. I have to make sure it's in the same place." No, it, the thing is, it was it was it, all, it, it, it fell off a lot. I think it needed to be. Uh, I think it got glued on eventually because it kept oh. on. Yeah, it, yeah, because it kept on because it was supposed to come off in in the stable scene, and uh, it didn't <laughs> because we glued we glued it on and. And then we had to do, I think, I think Dominic was there that day as well, so like, he, he probably knows what I'm talking about. But um, yeah, like, I remember it was like, uh, we, we, the, f the first couple of takes we did, it, was like it, just, it wasn't coming off because it, it came off you just walking to set from, like, from, uh, from the, like the, my trailer. And then so it was, it was any, any act of movement, would. But it, it would just come off, so it had to be like glued to my face. And then we realized when I have that with the scene with Cat, it wasn't coming off, and we're just like, okay, we need to unglue it now. And it was the, the beauty mark was the main character that day, I think. Yes, it was such it was an important part such, of the story. Yeah, it was such a scene stealer. I mean, yeah, it's like, like I, I, I'm come on, like, yeah. I wonder if you're a beauty mark, how you audition. You know, like, hi, I'm the purple star, and I think I'd do this role better than anyone else, and I would like, yeah, to, it's, uh, I would like to be stuck to Chris's face, yeah, please. It yeah. was such a scene stealer. It, was, uh, it, needs to, it needs to wind its neck in. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's go back to your dialect coach. Mm -hmm. Give me uh, a couple lines that you, so they can tell the difference between Chris and Philip. Okay. He's uh, got to get in character here. Uh, get what, his what game is he, face on. Like, um, oh, what did, oh, I'm trying to think of a line now. It's like, okay, hold on, I've got to remember one. So this is my accent. 
this is how I talk, but Philip is, uh, I've shown you your, no, what, no, what's it? Okay, hold two seconds. You've shown me your pride and joy, Mrs. Fraser. Now it's time to show you mine. Ooh! Yeah. I, think he's, I think he's talking about his horse, Lucas. But the, yeah, there's a lot of innuendo that I just went, well, yeah, you gotta, you gotta like dive in. As soon as you get any double entendre like that, you gotta dive in. And, and you're kind of known for your sneer in that role, too, so we need a good sneer at some point. Yeah, okay. Um. Maybe you could do that line again and give the sneer at the end. Okay. Uh, okay, hold on. Um. You've shown me your pride and joy, Mrs. Fraser. Now it's time to show you mine. Yeah, I, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is that, is that, did that work? I don't know. I'm not a very good actor. <laughs> oh my, okay, so you're in Outlander. You've been cast in the role. We've already talked about how you become Philip Wiley. Mm. What about? What about the makeup and costume? I mean, Sam. Sam constantly talks about how long it takes to do his back, right? Yeah. I'm thinking, though, that that makeup on your face, women know what it's like to have to do your makeup every day. So how long did it take to get in that makeup? So I arrived to, to set, like, every, well, I think every day I was, I was working, like, two, two hours early. So Kat, Kat was always the first on because I think she had to get, like, um, you know, like grey, grey streaks, and there's a whole, there's a whole deal that she had to, to go through. So Kat was always the first on set, but I, based on the schedule, I remember I was always, I was always second, and uh, yeah, I was in the chair for about two hours, just p purely because I think, I think my first day, we changed, it was, it was powder, like, but, because obviously these light, you know, the lights, uh, when you're on set, and it's, they're very intense. Like they're, I don't know if anyone's ever been on a television set or a movie set. It's, it's uh, the, like the lighting is like it's very hot. It's like the the, bulk, the the you know I don't know what the usage is of the electricity bills, but it must be massive because it's just it's it's so intense. And like uh, when you're standing under them, especially if you've got like uh, you know any kind of powder or makeup, it's like it will you will start to perspire. And uh, it's, so obviously because I was like caked in white makeup, it was just like there was a couple of, couple of beads dripping down. So we had to like kind of like reevaluate like how, how we would do it for, my, for the second. So we, we, we worked through it, but then <clears throat> I think the girls in the makeup trailer had to kind of uh, reevaluate what, what we were going to do. And it basically became like paint, like kind of like, a, like I don't know, like Mexican Day of the Dead. You know what I mean? Like in terms of, so that's, that's essentially... Uh, <clears throat> That's essentially where, where, what we did. So it was like, like the, jo that, uh, the Joker. Like, yeah, yeah. You said you wanted that as your Tinder profile, yeah, right? With yeah, all that yeah, makeup yeah. running. 100%. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably why I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> what, what about, um, walk us through the process of costume. Uh, because obviously when you audition, you have no idea what they're going to dress you in, right? So you get cast. You got to go to costume, and they're going to get you ready and get your clothing, get you measured, get you figured out what they're going to put you in. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, I had an idea because I read, I read um, the, 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 the source material that Philip was involved in. So I knew uh, he was like, you know, he, he, was, he was a peacock, basically. That's kind of like, um, and that's kind of why I, 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 I do that in terms of my process as an actor as well, because that's kind of what we got taught in drama school is like, uh, if your character was an animal, who would he be? And um, I, 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 I love that because we are, we are animals. We, um, I think it's very important to, to, to remind yourself of that. Like if you, if you as an individual were an animal, who would you, what would you be? And who's, what, what's, your, you know, what's your spirit? Uh -huh. And uh, for me, I, I, I knew immediately it wasn't, it wasn't hard <laughs> to, to grasp the fact, the fact that uh, Philip was a peacock. And 
and uh, I would, and I, and I, I, I so I, I guess I knew he was going to be, you know, dressed to the nines, and he was, um, you know, he, he had just come back from Paris, and uh, he was riddled with syphilis, probably. Um, <laughs> So have you ever done a pe period piece where you would have been in something like that, in a costume like that? Um, yeah, well, in, yeah, uh, yeah, I've, uh, I guess more Shakespeare, uh, that okay. I've, um, like I, I'm trying to think, uh, I, yeah, yeah, I, did, I, did, like, I don't know if you've heard, like Moliere, Tartuffe. I did, mm -hmm. I did that as yeah. well, so I can try to think of anything else. Um, yeah, just a couple, it's all stage, all stage, yeah. So when they give you a costume like that, do you feel transformed by it? I mean, so you have this role, <coughs> and in your mind you're, you're taking on that mm. persona. Well, well, but yeah. once you put the clothes on, does that make you, Chris goes completely oh, away, Philip shows I think, up. I think Judy Dench said um, she starts with the shoes, and I couldn't relate to that more because... Um, as soon as as soon as you do, like put yourself in. I mean, I I dress like an asshole. I get it, but uh, but he's he's a bit more. He's a bit. He's he's worse than me. So um, he. Uh, yeah, so it's when you really step into those clothes and like you put it on, and it's because there's, there's so many layers as well. This is what I think that's probably why I was sweating so much is because it's it's very toasty, and. Um, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, I, 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 you, you, it's, it's impossible. How could you not? You know what I mean? Like it's very, it's, it's so extravagant and and fancy. It's just, it's, it's. You can't be a normal guy when you put that stuff on. You have to just, ta da! You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just take it yeah. on and go. You've got to. You've got to. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And you were sharing with me earlier that a lot of what you've done is in stage, mm -hmm. that because, and mm -hmm. go ahead, and if you would share your philosophy where you were talking about, you felt like stage had given you the start? Yeah, well, so, I mean, again, I can't speak for um, what, it, what it's like in the US, but certainly back in the UK, it's very, you've got to earn your stripes, I think, to, to work in TV and film. Um, like, we are, we're very big, um, when it comes to drama school, like you're, you're trained for the stage, essentially. You're classically trained, so you're trained for the stage. And, and um, uh, to get, I mean, obviously, if you're very, very lucky, and I mean, I, and I am very lucky. That's why I'm, I'm here speaking to you, to you all today. Um, but I think if you're very, very lucky, then maybe you'll, you'll automatically just like rise to stardom or, or, or go straight into film and TV, but it's very, very rare. It's very, very rare. It happens to you know very, very few people, and um, I think you have to earn your stripes. And I think you do that on the stage, and eventually, if you keep grafting. But then again, it's still luck. It's still total luck. Like people, like some of the, I can't. I mean, how many Meryl Streeps and Robert De Niro's that have went unnoticed their whole careers? Like probably countless. You know, what I mean, that doesn't mean they're unsuccessful doesn't mean they're bad it just it just it is what it is i don't i don't understand how this business works i don't think any anyone does because it's just it's it's a lottery and uh i did a lot of yeah, i did a lot of stage production so i guess outlander is like one of my one of my i don't want to i don't want to call it a a big break because i'm still a relatively no no one but like um i've only I only did a few like TV and film credits before I got that, and I've only done a couple since as well. So, um, stay humble and keep working. I think is yeah. And you didn't originally start being to be an actor. Mm. What, if you would share what that was that oh, you originally oh, thought yeah. you wanted to well, do. Well, this is the thing. So to go back to it again. Uh, yeah, what I, 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 as a young as a as a young teenager, I wasn't very ambitious. I didn't really have a goal or a drive. And I'm just saying that because I'm being honest. Uh, I, I was quite good at football or soccer. Um, and I got a trial for my local, when, and my, my boyhood team, Dundee United, under 15s. <laughs> and uh, so I got a trial, but it's very, it's very, very hard. And like, just because you're good, that doesn't mean you get it happens. So I didn't, I didn't work out. And I remember uh, I, sc I, sc I scored in the first five minutes, and I was like, 
I'm going to be a millionaire. Women will love me because I'm going to be a professional uh, yeah, soccer player. Exactly, exactly. But then this is karma is a bitch. And that was the first five minutes. So for the rest of the 85, I was invisible. And it, what, we, we, I think my, it was, a tri it was a trial. So it's basically like, uh, I think every, every few months, it's like a 22 trialist. So it's 11 v 11. And I, for all I know, everyone else got signed because, uh, yeah. So it didn't work out. And I remember looking at the touchline and my dad was just like, and I was like on the brink of tears, being like, God, I scored though, like, come on. Anyway, it, didn't, it, was, it wasn't for me. Uh, I was probably quite shy, I don't know. But uh, yeah, and then I eventually I graduated, or was heading towards graduating high school, and I obviously had to make a decision what, my, <laughs> what career I was gonna do. So my guy, again, the same guidance teacher, uh, God bless her, Mrs. McGregor, she uh, helped me audition for a lot of drama schools. So I did that. She helped me prepare my, my, uh, my Shakespeare piece and my modern contemporary piece as well. And uh, a song, you got to sing a song as well. And she helped me prepare all of that. And, uh, but my dad, so I expressed, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember how it happened, but I expressed an interest in... Um, being a firefighter, and my dad, because of his military connections, he had, he had connections in the police, and, uh, and the, he had friends that were firefighters as well, so I, I ended up like training to be, I did, I did a lot of the training courses to be a firefighter, and because I had just obviously been a trialist for, for, a, you know, for soccer, I was, very, I was very fit, so I was prepared, and it, but it was it was grueling. It was it was hard. It was really really hard. I remember I remember throwing up like in the, at, uh, at some point, and, and then apparently that's normal. They're like, right, on your feet, get back to it. And I was like, really? Can I not like glass glass of water or something? And like, move. But then obviously it's a job that's that you're you're getting prepared to save lives. You know what I mean? There is no you know what I mean? If if when shit hits the fan, you got you got you got to go. So I I totally get it in hindsight. But um, you know I was like, <laughs> please, um, and and then and then I so I got into drama schools. I got into I got into Lambda in London, and uh, the RSMD in Glasgow. Um, I didn't get a scholarship to Lambda, so the fees were like. Extortion. I think it was like 30 grand a year. So that would have been like nine for three years. That would have been about 90 grand. So my dad was like, well, away you go. <laughs> well, he, he wasn't seeing oh, that one. Huh? He's like, away you go. But then obviously in, 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 in Scotland, uh, because um, if, if you are Scottish and you, and you go to a Scottish university, uh, you will get your fees. You, you, you will get your, your fees paid for you by, um, by the government, which is, got, you know, I, I love, I, it's amazing. That they do that, um, and so I had a decision to make, and I said, to, I remember saying to mom and dad, uh, after wiping the vomit from my mouth um, for for the firefighter training, I said, I'm gonna, because I knew I was a clown, I knew I was a clown, and I, I was like, you know what, this is this is an opportunity that um, I don't, a lot of people don't get, and clear, clearly it's worked out. I should probably pursue it and see what happens. So I, <laughs> I said, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to drama school, mom and dad. I'm gonna go. And, and my mother, I, and I, I, if I ever win an award for anything, I'm gonna say this in my speech. My dad was like, "Congratulations, son. You're gonna get a degree in unemployment." Proved him wrong, right? Oh, fuck hey, Dad, you, Dad. Guess what? People are flying me over, over the ocean. So I just come and see them, and I get paid. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you know, yeah, I, you know what? Though, when uh, I'm, I'm, I am, I'm joking. I am making fun. But uh, he, he was, uh, he was very proud when I got cast, and I, I could tell. He's not, he's not a sentimental man by any stretch of the imagination. But I, I knew, I knew he was delighted for me. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back now to Philip Wiley and Jamie. 
they're playing cards. They, they get in a fight later out in the stable, right? Yes. Ah, uh, yes. yeah, the very famous picture that we have yeah, out there. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, tell us about how long does it take to work on a scene like that to get to the point where you can film in? Because obviously there's some very physical parts of it and, and just figuring out, like, what's your motivation and how are you going to attack this? And Sam, what are you going to do? What am I going to do? And yeah, well, yeah, there's a whole... There's a, it's, a, it's a great question because there's loads, there's loads involved, obviously. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I worked with Dominic on the actual stunt of getting, getting push, pushed in the, um, in, the, in the horse shit. Uh, and then there's the whole, you know, the, the, the scene with Sam where I get thrown to, you know, uh, uh, the, the stable door. And then there's that. There's that. There's obviously, there's like, a, I guess, what would you call it? Um, uh, uh, well, again, it's like a, it's like an sexual assault on 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 Claire as well. So there's there's all of that, and again, that that was, it was very, that was net really nerve wracking because I I mean, where where do you begin with that? It's a, it's a quagmire that I've never ever. It's very, it's really uncomfortable as well because you I you know you know Katrina is the lead of this show and she's beloved by all of you guys, and I and I'm 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 just there for a few episodes, and then I'm gone, and I'm like. <sighs> well, I, I mean, can I? What do you What do you want me to do? Because I I I don't want I I just I. I <laughs> Where should I put my hands? Right? <laughs> How should I approach this? I, I I did not know where to begin. So like, but the team, the whole team, like look after you so well. So and they could and I said at the beginning, look, I am. I'm, re I'm, I'm very nervous about all of this because, uh, but the thing is, Katrina, Katrina is such a professional and she's ama an amazing, amazing woman. And we ended up getting like hammered that night just because, just, and she, she's just like, you were great. Because you, you, she was like, were you actually nervous? And I was like, yeah, I was, because you're, you're Katrina Balf, like, what, 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 am I, what am I supposed to do? Like, I've, I'm, I've got to like, throw, like, aggressively a a assault you and... It's, 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 a, it's a horrible thing to have to do, as a, even as an actor, and it's pretend, and it's fake, and it's not real. It's still like a really horrible uh, kind of frame of mind you have to put yourself in. And uh, I was very uncomfortable, but I just, I, I didn't, I just, that's why I kept on asking. Because she's like, why did, you, why did you keep on asking if I was okay? Why you kept on, I was like, because I wanted to make sure you're okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, 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 I didn't know which, and, and the reason why she's so great and she's and, and, and Dominic talked about this uh, yesterday about how, how amazing she is and she will just she just said do, do, do whatever do whatever you want and I will fight you off this is this is this is what would happen if this if this scene was real just go for it and I'll trust me I'll I'll, I'll push you back <laughs> And she did, and it was it worked it worked out. But she, um, I, I'm I'm very blessed to 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 work with uh, such incredible professionals. Yeah. So we'll we'll all keep our fingers crossed. Neither Chris nor I have seen Belfast yet, but we were having that discussion, and we'll keep our fingers crossed because there is such a buzz about her role in that movie and mm. perhaps being nominated for it uh, for the Oscar. So if if she would receive an Oscar, or even by virtue of being nominated, does that help you in the field? Can you, you know, do they look at your resume and it's say, oh, well... All because of me. It will <laughs> all be because of me. I will be the only... I made her what she is today. Like, I'm, 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 uh, I've, I've, I've met her, uh, her hubby, Tony, a couple of times, and I would be the first that she would thank. Yeah, like, like Tony, Tony would be a... But he's an extra. He's an extra. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and then I know that you've said, I mean, it's got to be very, to me, it's a difficult thing to think about. In one situation, you are having this different persona and like you're attacking somebody who's really your friend that you're probably going to go have a drink with afterwards. And in the case of Sam, it sounds like he likes to play jokes and he likes to play jokes with you, right? Are you willing to share yeah, that Yeah, okay, one? okay, okay. So, uh, some of you might May have... or may not have happened or been on Instagram. <laughs> okay. So, some of you might have seen the state I was in last night. 
I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. But it's happened before. And uh, it was, the, it was the, I think it was the season five rap party. Oh God, I can't believe I'm gonna say this. <laughs> right, so it was the season five rap party. And it does get wild, because obviously there's, there's beer and there's cocktails and there's just, everything is just thrown at you. And there's a big relief, because there's a lot of work. Yeah, of course, of course, and everyone, yeah. um, uh, and it's fun as well, because I remember, uh, it was the first time Richard Rankin, we'd, we'd, we'd met each other before, but I don't think, I don't think Richard remembered, like, uh, and, and, he, and he wouldn't, because I think it was very, it was very brief. But it was the first time Richard had seen me out of costume. And he said, I remember, I remember him saying, uh, how are you better looking than me? And, and, I, and I was like, well, that's, beauty is an eye of the beholder, Richard. <laughs> so, so there was, we were all having a really good, we were all having a really good time. And anyway, I had clearly a better time than everyone else. And, I, the last thing I remember, so apparently one of the bouncers, and this is, so this is Sam, this is Sam saying this to me, he went out, because he was, I think he had to, uh, he had obligations the next day, so everything I'm about to say is like, uh, because of how amazing a man Sam Ewan is, and apparently the, one of the bouncers said that I was trying to phone a taxi with my shoe. And then Sam, uh, Sam was like, I don't think you're going to get a taxi, Chris. So long story short, I wake up. And, and so Sam, Sam's got a beautiful home in Heinland in the west end of Glasgow. And I wake up with this blanket over me on his couch. And this massive hunk of a man in a bathrobe, vel probably made of velvet. <laughs> and he's got this wee, and I wake up like. <laughs> very confused. And he's got this wee espresso with him and he's like, it's okay. You're gonna, you're gonna be fine. <laughs> and I was like, what, what happened? And he's like, it's okay. <laughs> and I was like, because he was wearing a bathrobe, <laughs> and I was basically naked as well, I was like, Sam, you're a beautiful man, but you're not my type. <laughs> There are women here who have dreamed your dream, though. I'm just saying. Like, you're, I'm sure there's a lot of women <laughs> that would be very jealous of me right now. Yeah, yeah. But what happened? <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> my girlfriend at the time was like r furious, obviously. Furious. And I get these, all these missed calls, and she's like, Oh well, my God, you, I was so worried. And blah, 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 blah. And she's like, where are you? Where are you? And I was like, calm down. I'm, I'm, at, I'm at Sam's flat in the West End. Can you please come and get me? And she's like, all right, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'll be there in five minutes. I followed that yeah, apple. Yeah, yeah. How about bloopers? Did you ever have scenes that you were doing with them where, I know you hear a lot about Sam and Kat cracking mm -hmm. people up, like, you know, they just lose it and then everybody's laughing. Did you have some of those where yeah. you're getting really intense and then it just um, breaks down? I mean, 
kind of. I mean, I got. I mean, yeah. Not not really because I'm, again, because I, again, I. Uh, I don't. I, I didn't think that I was in a place where I could like waste anyone's time. Because when I when I when I work on set, like I don't want to. I guess you can call it imposter syndrome. I don't know. I think I, I think I deal with that a little bit. Like I don't. I don't. I don't belong here. So. Yeah. So I don't want to waste anyone's time. So I'll like if I if I make a mistake, like, even though like this is not an example. I I've I've embarrassed myself for the last half hour, but. Uh, uh, surprisingly enough, when I when I turn up, I want to like not waste anyone's time. So I, I yeah. So there, there probably is a few because uh, obviously you you like there's like there's there's uh, there's rewrites every day as well, which is like quite stressful. So like um, I, 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 you don't want um, the prompt to to come up and and like you got you got that word wrong or you got like because everything has to be like word perfect. Because it, and as it should be, because the writers of it's their job. So don't don't change their dialogue. Don't you know what I mean? So you have to. Yeah. So I don't know. Like me, me, when I'm more successful, I'll take the piss. But <laughs> until then, I'll behave myself. Yeah, Straight and yeah. narrow. Even <laughs> I just behave myself like that's a that's a joke. <laughs> that's a joke. Straight and narrow. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will we see you again in Outlander? Have they told you, hey, we're gonna, we may do some flashbacks with you, or I'm really concerned as to what happened to you, uh, and your sister, Judith, I mean, really. Yeah, what? well, yeah, I think, maybe, I don't know, maybe, <laughs> who knows, incest is the best, apparently. Yeah, yeah. We were kind of talking about, you know, if we think <laughs> the Christies are bad, what about the Wileys? I'm just I have no idea. Um... I have no idea. I th I, so what I, 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 I don't know if I can say without getting in trouble, but I... May or may not? Is that the way you, you say it? Maybe not in season six, but you will probably see him again. Ooh. Ooh, that's intriguing. Ooh. Okay. But that's just where we're at right now. There could, there could be changes. After this, I, it's pro. <laughs> you know, and for a character that was supposed to be such a great horseman, we never once, yeah, I don't think even in the book, he, Diana ever talks about him riding. She just says he's a great horseman. Well, he came so. over in a bus, the thing that I found out later, one of, so the Jocasta's wedding, I come over in a boat, but then my horse is in the stable, and I'm like. <laughs> yeah. So is it just like so a he, he, he parked his trophy horse. horse, like a trophy wife? Yeah, maybe? so he, he, parked, he parked his horse. And then walked to the other end of North Carolina. And then got a ferry back. Like, he's such an asshole. He's, 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 I hate him. I hate him. I, I, I hate him, but he paid some bills, right? Well, I, lo I love it, though. I love it. I love it. So you were sharing earlier, before we got on stage, that your sister actually works with horses, or had worked with horses in the United States. Right? Yeah, she. Um, she's a big. Yeah, she's a massive. Uh, she worked in a, uh, a ranch outside of Indianapolis, apparently, for like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So she's she's a big Indiana fan. Yeah, yeah. She 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 lived out there for a while, and. Um, yeah, I. That's, she's still. She's. I mean, she's a she's a physical therapist back back in uh, back in Scotland. But like, she's still got a big love for horses. Yeah, yeah. So, as children, did you ride, or were you around horses at all? She, so, only I think only she, she's the eldest. A lot of lot of my sister is the eldest. So I think we. Um, I I think so because there was like a, there's a, there's a stable um, there's a. There's stables just outside Dundee where we where we grew up, and because she was the eldest, like because she wanted to do something, we had to the, all the all the boys had to do it as well. So uh, yeah, I do remember though, but it was terrible. I remember being like, it's really scary, like like everything that um, that Dominic was talking about yesterday. It's like it's it's when you're up there, this is a it's a big deal. Like this is a, this is a an animal that's basically responsible for your life. 
and you have to make sure that you uh, res respect this, this creature because if you don't, it's not going to go well. Yeah. And, um, Believe me, we have cattle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they have a whole different mindset, and but you don't are, want to be on the wrong side of that either. No, 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 no. And they're they are they're 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 beautiful animals, and I've got a lot of respect for them. Like they're they're incredible, incredible. Like like if you look at the show, like and everything that like everything that like Dominic's done with the, the, the you know the stunts, and it's amazing. It's amazing. Like it's it's so so incredible, and so uh, like the work that must go into it is. I'll pay you later, Matt. <laughs> so how much of a time gap was there between when you filmed that and when you actually saw it completed? Say, that, all... again. Say that again, sorry. So when, when you actually did your work mm -hmm. of Philip Wiley, and then how long was it until you saw the scene completed and ready for TV? I didn't watch it. I didn't wa I, uh, you didn't watch I did it at all? Not, I, I did eventually, but I... Uh, I'm not. I'm not one of those actors that likes to watch my own. Mm -hmm. It's very uncomfortable. I, it's weird. I don't like. It's like, <laughs> who's that guy? Um, I don't know. I don't, it's just that's just a cell, It's an insecure insecurity, probably. I don't know. It's like a radio or television broadcaster saying, yeah. "I don't like to hear my own voice." Yeah. You know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, also, because I'm, I'm, I don't know if I'm any good, so like it's, 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 I don't know, it's, I don't know, it's, weird. it's, just, it's, it's just insecurity, I think, it's just like a, uh, not for me. I, I love, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor because of the, 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 the TV and the film and the stage that I've seen, so um, I love watching other people, but I don't, I, it's okay, so to put it in a sound, but I don't, be, I don't believe myself. <laughs> You're like, I don't believe oh, it. Yeah, get him it's off like, the stage. yeah, it's like, I, shite. I, you're not. You, yeah, you're not good. Yeah, I just don't. I don't think I'm very good. I don't know. It's something like that. Um, another thing you were sharing with me in the process is though, there's a lot of scenes that would help to add to the character, or explain who they are, or um, just add more to the story that don't even get to the point of being filmed. So if you would share the scene that we talked about with Ed. Yeah, so there was a really, I mean, again, it's the, the scripts that you get are, are really, really thick. And I, I mean, I'm, it's, that's a producer, like executive decision. Um, I, don't, I don't know the conversations that you have. I, I'm sure every decision is made for a reason, um, but that's way above my pay grade. Um, I'm just I'm just one, a, a guy in a weird costume. Um, so yeah, yeah, like there was a really, really, but again, it's probably made for a reason. But there was a really good scene between uh, Stephen and Philip, where uh, you get to see Stephen and kind of, an, uh, I guess you would call it extortion, where it's like, I'm going to use you, and I know, I know, I know you think you're bad, but I'm going to. I'm going to use you. You don't know what bad is, boy. And, and uh, out batting the bad. Yeah, huh? exactly. That's what was so like great about the scene. And um, again, decisions are made for a reason. So I can't tell you, but it was like basically Philip trying to uh, out outwit Stephen Bonnet. And um, it's when it comes to you know brains versus brawn, like. It's not gonna. It's not always gonna work again. Like if you try and manipulate a pirate, they'll just take a knife out, and and it's and as you've seen, Philip has had. He's not a big fan of knives. <laughs> he's, he, he, he's, he makes him. It makes him uncomfortable, nervous. Uh, so it was a really cool scene, but um, yeah, it didn't. It, it would have been great. It would have been great, but like uh, again, there's there's time limits. You've got everything has to. Everything's got to be done within basically 40 minutes per episode. So, like, there's a, and it wouldn't just be me. It's not. It's, I'm sure every episode, every episode, there'll be stuff left on the editing room floor. But that's just the nature of the business. It just it happens. Yeah. So, what was your reaction after you did the table read and 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 you and Edder really get into the batty look, and then they're like, "Oh yeah, you know what? We're not going to have time for that. We're just going to cut it." I mean, again. I, I, like, you know, yeah, Katrina and Sam are the centerpieces, so 
I, I, I didn't, I, I mean, I was, I was gutted, obviously, because it, it would be a really cool, you know, it would be a really cool scene to do, and it would have been a lot of fun, but um, you, can't, you can't take it personally, because it's not my job. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm there to do a job, and, the, you know, the, there are so many people above me that tell me what my job is, so uh, it's, it's, you, can't, you, it's, you can't take it personally. It is what it is, yeah. So, in a scene, let's go back to the one where you're in the stable. Like, you've got three characters there, but how many other people are there in that vicinity? Because I think we lose, we think it's very intimate and that there's not very many, you know, it's just those three characters, but then you start to look, well, there's a cameraman, there's a director. How many people would be in that area? Um, I would say it could be, I mean, it's definitely, I mean, the crew, the crew are so important. Um, obviously people, I mean, when filming happens, I mean, when you're setting up, there's, there could be up to there'll be dozens and dozens. But I think when you, when the, you know, when the, the director starts rolling, or, sorry, the first AD calls action, um, most people are the exit. So I get, I mean, you've got the director, even, not even the director, because the director's usually in another room watching everything on playback. So you've, you've got uh, the DOP, uh, the focus guy, uh, the the first AD probably it just a, probably just a handful just a handful like every, I mean it's very busy, but when when the action starts rolling, um, you, you, well you need silence every, you know so it's it's, it's, just a, it's just a very very respectful work environment like it's uh, and that and that's why to, just to answer your question about bloopers, that's probably why I don't take the piss because. There's, there's so many people doing an important job. I, it's, I, I don't want to be the guy that lets anyone down. Like, yeah. yeah, and I, I appreciate the thought of, I don't want to waste anybody's time, because as they say, time is money and we're all running out, yeah, right? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Although there's, I remember I worked with uh, James Cosmo, who's a very, very big actor back home. And he gave me a great piece of advice. He said, um, Take as much time as you need, son, because the cheapest thing on a film set is the film roll. And um, I remember when he said that to me, it just kind of put all my nerves. That was uh, uh, Outlaw King. I don't know if you've seen that on Netflix, but uh, yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah. So just take as much time as you want, I guess. Hey, we'll give you a moment there. Yeah. Um, okay, now, here's some other things that, when Ed was here last time, we talked about music. Now, I think I heard you say you sing, right? Um, you attempt to sing. You're not a professional singer, but... I mean, where, where are we going with this? Where? Care to share any, or if not... I know an impersonation I heard you do the other night at the bar. Oh. oh it's one you'll remember. It wasn't that late. Okay. 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 okay so who, this who one was, we were talking about the airport that you flew into, and you were saying, Molin, Mylan, and we said, no, it's Moline, Moline, and you sang. Oh, yes. Moline, Moline, Moline. <laughs> I really think that should be the promo. They should work with Dolly Parton. That could be the promo for oh, Moline. Oh, God bless her. She's an angel, isn't she? She's amazing. Are there other songs that you sing? Um, one Hit Wonder. One Hit Wonder. Yeah. And Jolene, yeah. is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean... Um, so one of the questions I asked Ed was, uh, because I don't know, maybe this is just my persona, but uh, UK, Scotland, Ireland... They talk like Beatles versus Mick Jagger. We talk like Michael Jackson versus... Well, that's not even a competition. The Beatles, the Stones, no. It's the, the Beatles every day. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> can you do a Mick Jagger impersonation? Because Ed can. And not, I mean, not to put pressure on uh, you. I mean... Uh, but he strutted it all, um, you know, did the sneer and everything. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's... See, the thing about Mick Jagger is that you just have to, like, I don't know, like, you just have to be, like, a, 
Like, I'd, imagine like a T-Rex with like cerebral palsy. Like, it's just like... <laughs> As I just, oh yeah, I love it, love it, yeah. Can, can you moonwalk like Michael Jackson? I, no, 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 that's... Can you just walk? <laughs> that might be the question. <laughs> I can barely, barely stand. Some days, like, some days it's more difficult yeah, than others. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah. okay, um... Favorite music genre and band? Um, a big, big Eddie Vedder fan, so Pearl Jam's up there. Yeah. He is, uh, he's an amazing, amazing man. Um, uh, big fan of Queen, Fre Freddie's uh, um, Yeah, I kind of... Bob Marley, like I, 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 I don't. Yeah, man. I don't really. Really Yeah, exactly. I don't really. I, I love, I love so many genres because music. I think music to to tie yourself down to one would be you're you're eliminating like so many other incredible artists. So. So share with us the movie that you auditioned for that was. <laughs> ah yes. So obviously you'll know Rami Malek. Got the Oscar for Freddie. So overrated. But he had some tough competition. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently they needed a name, which is fine. It's fine. It's fine. But yes, uh, it was an it was an it was an honour. It was a, it was, uh, and I surpri surprisingly got quite far. I don't know, I don't know how I don't know how his editions went, but my, I loved mine. I love mine, and um, like I said, like in terms of Outlander, like I, I will throw myself into the part and just in humili. I don't care. I've got no shame left. Like I'll just humiliate myself. So can and you do the Freddie Mercury? Oh, like that? Yeah. Or strut? A well, that's Mercury what I did. So that's so that's just yeah. So at the end of an audition, like because directors and casting directors want to just want you to just do whatever you can give give you as much chance to impress them or to like just lay it out on the line as you can and like is, is there anything else you that you that, that you want to because I, I did the scenes and you know i did the songs and that was all fun and then they're like is there, is there anything else you want to share <laughs> and i was like remember live aid at wembley and I was like, they're like, they kind of looked at each other like, yeah? I was like, Ew! 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 And I didn't get the part. <laughs> but you shot for the moon, man. You shot for the moon. That, yeah, that would have been very interesting. I, I could see in that part. Maybe I should be a casting. No, well, no, no, no. I wish you were. I wish you <laughs> were. Yeah, yeah. But no, he, uh, Rami, Rami did an incredible job and deservedly was rewarded for it. Just because he won an Oscar or something like that. No, um, no big deal. So you really, you already told us some of these things I was going to ask you. I know, since Dom's here, what's the hardest stunt you ever had to do? Or maybe Dom is thinking of the hardest stunt he could make you do right now. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah. I, Riding horseback, yeah, we're going to shoot you, Chris, you're going to fall. Okay, so believe it or not, it's on stage. Um, and Dom, Dom was talking about it yesterday in terms of like health and safety is now like, is a massive cloud. Um, because there's, a, there's, there's so much that you, like technicalities, just because like, accidents do happen and... Uh, understandably, like they, 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 you know, they, you need to look after the the talent that are that are working because if something does happen, like, like there's an actor, um, uh, Simon Russell Beale, back home, and I think he he fell off stage and broke his finger, and like the whole, I think he was doing a play at the National Theatre, and um, I think the rest of the 
for the rest of the production, uh, the um, his understudy had to had to do it. And the thing is, Simon Russell Beale is a he's a he's a big name back home on stage, um, and uh, uh, people are paying tickets to see him as well. So they're not, with all due respect to the understudy, they're not they're not paying to. So there's a lot of refunds, I assume. So long again, just to get to the point, um, you you do need to kind of like take care of everyone. But anyway, the, so, the, the, so it could have it could have went really really bad. But anyway, I was doing the Jungle Book on stage, and I was playing like the uh, like King Louis, or whatever the King Louis equivalent would be, because I don't think we got the rights from Disney to. Um, the same script, basically, but uh, um, I don't think we got the rights for the names. But anyway, I was there was these ropes hanging from the stage, and my 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 first entrance was to, oh god, my first was just basically to like like bit like a chimpanzee essentially like swing. Even he, he was an orangutan, but you know what I mean. Um, it was like swinging from like from from rope to rope, and because I did it in rehearsal, like because I was obviously just showing off, the director was like, yeah. Yeah, do that, we'll, we'll stick with that. I could, are, you, are you cool with that? And I was like, yeah, let's do it. I can ride a horse. Exactly, sure. exactly, yeah. exactly. So I had to do this thing where like, I was, had one rope, had one hand and one rope, and then I would use my other hand to get the other rope, and then I would basically just like slide down. So it looked, you know, very, very kind of monkey behavior. And, um, I think aesthetically, it, it would have, but again, those first night jitters. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I think I was. Anyway, it's not. It's, it didn't, nothing happened, but I, I remember taking too big a jump, too big a leap, so my trajectory off the ramp to get to the first rope and then get to the other one was just way too quick, and it was again. That's you know, it's, it's kind of like. Again, what Don was saying yesterday in terms of like Ed, you know Ed's energy to get to, to you know it, that's that's exactly what Don was talking about. It's like you you have to just like just do what you rehearsed, do what you rehearsed, and I I just because there was a live audience, I you know I, I went mental and uh, I, I I I remember basically holding the rope by like a couple of fingers because my again I was just I just leapt way too quick. And my 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 speed and uh, energy just I, I nearly if I if I lost grip of the rope, I probably would have fallen about 15 to 10 feet down, and I would have landed very hard, and it wouldn't have looked right. It wouldn't have looked like it was in the script. Put it that way. Like I would, <laughs> and I would probably be unconscious. So yeah, luckily uh, I I, uh, I I held on. For dear life, yeah. So did you ever have to do that stunt again? Did, did they come back and be like, yeah, you know, we're gonna cut that. I no, think. I just didn't tell and no one noticed. That's the thing, and no, the only person that noticed was me. Okay. Um, and that, and I, did, I just knew, okay, that was a lesson learned. Um, don't, don't it, it, your first night should be the same as your dress rehearsal. Like, do, do what you rehearsed. Like, you're a performer, you're a professional. Don't let a live audience affect what you're doing. Um, there just flies on. If you're if you're sitting in a theatre, you should be a fly on the wall. You're just observing the action on stage, and it should just be. And, that, and that's how it should be. Um, and, and in terms of like good acting as well, that's that's fundamentally what it should be as well. Should, the audience should be watching you like you don't know they're there. And that's how I like to like. For example, on, on it's the same with like stage. Sorry, uh, uh, film and TV as well. Like um, the ca the camera should be. Entirely invisible, like um, the, o the only, yeah, just just bl bl every everything should just be blacked out, and and it's just you and the action and the person you're working with, yeah. So, but you fortunately saved yourself from that. I, right? Yeah, I did, I did, but yeah, I was the only one and that. Yeah, so, and, and also, it's just embarrassing. Like, imagine if I did fall, like I would be, it would be. It would be, no it would be, be the, it would be the worst as well. So, I'm, exa stick. exactly, exactly. So. Um, yeah, no, no disasters yet, but, well, apart from today, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do some lightning round stuff here then, you know, like, first, first answer. Favorite right. holiday? Not the 4th of July, I bet, right? 
Uh, Cape Town, beautiful, it's amazing. Well, here as well, it's here as well, of course. But Cape Town was amazing, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, did you ever read the Outlander books before you did your audition? This isn't really lightning. You can, you can stretch read, this one if you want. I just happen to think of it. I read um, Drums of Autumn. Is that, is that the one, the fourth book? Which one? The, the, the Drums of Autumn. Drums of Autumn, yeah. yeah. I read okay. the book, yeah. Um, I think that was Philip's uh, first appearance. So I read, I read that one. Yeah, but, it, but when I got cast, I didn't have a lot of time to to prepare, so I just I did I, you know I did I did what I could. But um, yeah, there was a lot there was a lot because he arrived so late mm -hmm. into the show. I just wanted to read the source material that he's involved in, so I could um, take it from there, basically. Yeah. Did you find what Diana had written as far as descriptions of, of Philip helpful? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He's he's written as a as a dandy and you know very eccentric and quite a, you know a, you know. But also, kind of like I recognised, like who he who he would be in modern day times as well. Mm, mm -hmm. Like I think he, you can see, just someone who's got a completely fictionalised version of themselves. Like someone who's so unself aware of how creepy they are, and like you. Know, I think we all. There met, might be some people I can. Think yeah, of there's that. definitely like we've all met guys like that. You're like, mm. fuck it, look in the mirror. What are you? <laughs> Um, favorite thing your mom makes? Would that be the lasagna? Oh, 100%. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so if, if she would just ship that to you for Christmas, that oh, would be fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I might have to ask her. Um, what's the most often used app on your phone? Uh, probably, yeah, probably WhatsApp. Just, WhatsApp, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd say so, just... One of the social media. Yeah, like just that. like texting ridiculous memes to the boys. Now, yeah. do you like doing social media? I mean, some people don't. Um, as um, far as like Instagram and so Facebook. I do, I, yeah, I do have Instagram and Twitter, but I'm just not very good at it. Like, if I, yeah, I'm, uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I arrived very late to all of that because I'm, I, I, yeah, I, I never really, um, I don't know, I'm kind of in the moment kind of guy. Mm -hmm. And, quite private as well, so I don't, sh I don't know, I don't share a lot, I don't know, I, 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 I mean, I'm, I am now for like career, like for career purposes, I guess, but like, uh, I'm not, I was never one for, um, share, for putting yeah. putting stuff out there. Yeah, just exactly, because. Putting content <laughs> out for putting content out, right? Nobody, like, like the, the story I just said about Sam, no, who wants, to, like, you, it was, I mean, you guys found it funny, but like, it's, it's, it's the worst, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, get, I get myself into that stuff all the time, so it's like, it's, it would be great television, but it's not good for my mental health. Um, <laughs> what about exercise? You said you, you played soccer. Do you still play? Uh, no, not really, but I, yeah, I go to the gym as much as I can, yeah. Okay. I, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. And I, yeah. I've always thought probably that is an important thing for an actor. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because there's a lot of physical demands on you. Yeah, and so, again, I don't, I, I probably can't say too much, but I am in the middle of the, um, doing rounds of auditions for the, the Game of Thrones prequel. Uh, and the character that I'm up for is uh, a, bit, a bit killer. He's a, he's, he swings a sword, so... Um, it's been very, it's been made very clear by my agent. You need to go to the gym six days a week and do not stop. Like Thanks take a, a break, take a break on Sunday if you have to. But you are gonna, you need, you need to, yeah, you need to look the part, boy. So, yeah. Did you say you had auditioned for the regular Game of Thrones? Yes, I. Uh, so what was it, what was it again? It was uh, you, you're on Greyjoy, the pirate. Um, but I lost, I lost out to, to Pillow, who's, again, he, he's, he's, he's fantastic, but, um, I think they said I was two, because I was 28 when I auditioned, and the character was supposed to be 35, I think, um, or that's what they said, anyway, so maybe, maybe it's just, just a kind way to say no, right? <laughs> No. But I, uh, but I really, and I get it, because I, re I read, I re I'd read the Game of Thrones books, and I remember reading his description, 
and I was because he had like dark hair and like dark features, and um, I was like, okay, I can, yeah. And he, but and I remember his opening monologue uh, to his his Greyjoy contingent was so badass, and I loved it. I read it, I read it like over and over again. Uh, I think it was called the King's Moot speech, and that's what I had to do in the audition. And um, I read it over and over again, and I just loved because it, it was just so. It was just so arrogant, and like, I, it, it was like absolutely, f and he was so evil as well. And I think that's probably why I only get bad guys because I just seem to do them better than anyone with honor. And <laughs> what what does that say about me? I've got no idea. But uh, it was, yeah, it was, um, it was a lot of fun. I got quite far, but I, I, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't know how far I got, but it was, it was, uh, it was close. But ultimately, I was. I was too young. I think that yeah, clearly I, I was. I wasn't. Yeah, wasn't quite. And yeah. you were telling me you feel like a lot of the roles you've had have been the bad guy, the evil guy. Yeah. That you're kind of typecast yeah. maybe into yeah. it. Yeah. Well, I mean, again, I can't discuss. I mean, it's not my decision. I mean, you'd have to speak to my agent. I don't know. Like, it's, they, I just get the audition and then um, take it from there. Uh, but it, <laughs> yeah, my track record is not very nice, guys. But that's the thing. In stage, I was always playing like the the, the, the comedy, the comedy part, like the, the the one that gets all the laughs. But then, as soon as I transitioned to like uh, TV and film, just yeah, it's playing like a horrible, horrible guys. It seems to be the way. So I don't know. Hopefully, you guys get to see me. I was going to say, like, yeah. yeah. Do you feel like if you get one role that would stretch your, your wings in a different way, then maybe people would start seeing you in other... Well, is yeah, it very I mean, much a, a I, I, behind the scenes, like, hey, yeah. my buddy says you'd be really good for this. Like, all uh, acting, um, all casting is done by a group of people that know each well, other? Absolutely. I think casting directors do know each other, and they do talk, and they will, they will kind of share thoughts of, like, who works well for what, and... Um, it would be it would be naive to assume that those conversations don't happen. So and they, and they will they will you know help each other out. So that's probably why you do see occasional actors like play like for example like Matt List, like Matthew McConaughey for example was like all these rom coms that he was doing for ages and ages and ages and then he basically says to his agent like no I want and then he took a risk with Dallas Buyers Club and he's not really looked back. Um, and I, I found that so admirable because it's, it was so obvious that like, like McConaughey was like better than what, what he was doing. Like it was, I, I recognized that. And I was like, why is this guy... And I'm not, and it's not, I'm not disparaging rom-coms because it's, like it's, it's, a, it's a very successful genre for a reason. Um, I'm just... And there's nothing wrong with doing it, but like, to have a, like, almost an entire CV of like rom-coms, I just like, no wonder the guy broke out and became like one of the biggest actors on the planet, one of the most respected actors on the planet because uh, um, I don't think anyone should be pigeonholed. I, should, I think everyone should like do, do genre. For example, <laughs> on the flight over I saw uh, the trailer for the new Resident Evil movie and I was like, well I guess I didn't get the part then. <laughs> It's the one of the best. One of the Sorry, <laughs> we forgot the, to let you know. It's one of the hilarious ways to find out. Like, ah, I remember that scene. <laughs> Are there a lot of times where you've auditioned for something and then you see the person that got the role and you're like, oh, they played it different. I thought I would have. Yeah, I mean, no, I mean, it's, it's like, I mean, it's like, uh, I think Brian Cranston said it best as well. He said, um, your job is like no different. You're an architect, essentially. You're just, you're, you're a... You're presenting your pitch of a building, and it's up to the surveyor or whoever's in charge to pick what building they want. It's like okay, and it's not. Per that's why you can't take anything personal. It's not personal because it's like sometimes, like I'm six two, but sometimes they might want someone who's six one or six three. You know what I mean? It could be like these margins, um, and yeah, you just have to just. Ro roll with the punches, really. It's not. It's like this is this. You know, the industry gets. It's, it's, it's brutal. It's like it's, you can't. And it's probably why I'm a riot. Because <laughs> like, you just have to 
yeah, you just have to just go with it. Just go with it. Don't don't take anything personally. And then when you, when when you get a good job and when you or, or when you, when, you, when you do get hired, just count your blessings and be grateful. Yeah. So we're almost to the end of the year. Can you give us an idea of how many different auditions you would have had through this year? And it's kind of an anomaly because we're coming out of the pandemic, and so that makes a difference. But. Well, yeah, usually, so a lot fewer than than most, but because um, the, the industry has only just started to pick up again in the last maybe probably since maybe Feb, February or March. But, uh, so since then, I've maybe like a, a handful every month. So yeah, I don't know, uh, but it's all like vet. Like so, I've had one or two in the room because of social distancing and all that it's usually been self tapes so you just send a tape over and um especially if it's like if you've got to send something to like los angeles you have to make sure that when you send it time wise you got to remember okay la is like i don't know like nine nine or ten hours behind that uk so you, you have to you have to remember that when you're taping you gotta be like oh shit, <laughs> yeah yeah, so, yeah. Just, uh, can you give us an idea of what you got coming up? Or are you sworn to secrecy? Um, yeah, so I'm doing a feature right now. Uh, that is a good guy, I think. Well, it's a matter of opinion, I guess. But, um, yeah, it's about, uh, I, I, can't, I, I can't say too much about it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a small budget independent piece and my mate wrote it and is directing it and it's about a single dad it's called Sa i think the working title is called saturday um but it might be called ice cream i'm not sure it's one is <laughs> that sounds weird but uh it's got i i like the name saturday because uh it's the only it's basically the whole film takes place on a day one the only the only day he gets to spend with his daughter and he's been given like a second chance to be like a good dad because he's an alcoholic and a drug addict and he's made a lot of mistakes. And um, it was, it's a character that I, it's, it, I, I think every kind of male actor should like, would jump at because there's, there's, it's so rich. It's like, he's, he's, he's such a, he's such a like a, 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 like troubled and conflicted guy. And he's, he had like a wonderful, wonderful life and he threw it away because he partied way, way too much. And I think it's a, it's a really beautiful story about him trying to like make up for his mistakes. And his his ex is like giving him a chance on this one day. And it's it's heartbreaking because it, you know it, it, there's hurdles he has to jump. Yeah. And and that sounds like a role that is so different than what you've played so far. Absolutely. So Absolutely. really stretches yeah. you yeah, yeah. as to thinking about motivation and do you know someone like that that you can channel off of or have you, you know, along yeah, those lines? Yeah, def definitely. Um, not, not, and not one individual, but just I think, um, I think collectively there's, uh, you, meet, you meet various people in your life that might still be in your life that you can like kind of borrow things from and uh, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a special role and I'm, I'm, I'm very blessed to have been given the opportunity to do it, yeah. So that's in production right now? Yeah, yeah. And do you know when it will be out? And how would we be able to access that? To well, I, 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 yeah, I'm, I've got no, I'm the wrong guy to ask. Uh, um, Watch I, I, yeah. for Acorn or BBC I, or... Yeah, I've got, no, I've got no idea. I've got no idea. Um, I, I'm, IMDB. You can find anything. On yeah, IMDb, exactly. Right? I imagine there'll be... A release, but like um, we've only just like kind of started. Um, it's in the very, and again, it's very, it's like it's self-funded by one of my mates, Johnny Blair, who's um, a fantastic filmmaker. He's he's um, um, he, he's made like well, this is his first feature because he's mainly just made shorts. So I don't know, maybe nine, probably nineteen people will see it anyway. So it would be great if you guys do get an opportunity. Twenty, <laughs> twenty-one, twenty-two, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I know um, your publicist had said that you do writing also. Do you do writing? Yeah, so... Tell us about that. I'm intrigued by that. <laughs> so my, uh, again, my friend Johnny, we're, we're going to do another film next year as well. 
uh, that I've that I've written, and it's a black black comedy because uh, I'm a big fan of I don't know you guys you, um, Martin McDonough. He did uh, three billboards outside Ebbing, was it? Yeah, but he's got a very extensive like theatre uh, like like credits, and he's one of the most hilarious writers ever. So he, I'm massively influenced by, and I wanted to write because he writes about kind of rural Galway in Ireland, because his parents, I think he grew up in Camberwell in in, uh, in London, but his family come from uh, Connemara in the west coast of Ireland. And it's just these hilarious, and I've, having performed his plays, it just, it, it bit me like a bug. It's just so dark, it's so, like, wrong that it's hilarious. Like, some of the conversations in his plays are just incredible. So I was like, you know what, I want to write a Scottish version of that. And I came up with the idea with my mate, that, like, it's set on, the, set on the day of a second independence referendum. And they kidnap, these two guys kidnap the only Tory MP in Scotland, <laughs> and they send, uh, so they're basically just like, just <laughs> really, and really pathetic terrorists, essentially. <laughs> and they send a viral message to number 10 Downing Street. If you do not, g <laughs> if you do not give Scotland its independence by midnight tonight, we will execute your only MP, and it's just obviously there's a lot of it's, it spirals from there, and it's a I, we're we're very proud of it, <laughs> and it obviously doesn't go to plan, but uh, we're it's I I think if all if we get the money and we you know if things uh, if the cards fall as we hope they should then it. it will give people a lot, it will be, be fun. Because the thing is, what, what, one of the biggest questions we asked ourselves was like, what, what is Scotland known for? Like, what is, like, we make fun of ourselves. We don't, we don't take ourselves either. We, want, we, we like it when the world laughs at us because um, we just don't take ourselves seriously. And I think, I think we've, I, th I don't know, I think we've got something quite, quite cool that, that um, an international audience would find hysterical. Because, uh, again, our inspiration is like really dark, dark humor. And I noticed you enjoyed uh, the guys in ties last night, especially when the guy yeah. pulled out the Scottish accent. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys were great. Yeah. So if you had your choice between comedy and drama, would you choose comedy? Or what, what would be the genre that you would like to, if money was no object, I they mean, would just throw it at your feet? No, every, all of them, all of them. Because I think still, uh, I'm in this business because of storytelling. You know what I mean? I remember my mum reading me Dr. Zeus when I was just, just yay high. And yeah, like I, rem yeah I remember like learning to read because my mum would just like read me stories. And I think that was probably the seed that kind of planted all of this. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I love storytelling. And there's no, obviously some stories are better than others, but the genre, genre shouldn't matter. Whether it's a really grotesque horror movie, Obviously, it's harder to probably navigate a really interesting story, but if, if, the, if the writer is skilled enough, if, and there's a lot of humanity in it, ultimately that's what it comes back, comes down to. It's like, it's like, what, where's where's the humanity in the piece? Like, where, what's what's the, what do we connect to? Like, what do we relate to? Because that's that's what we like in music. That's what we like in films and and and, and, and any any culture and art. Um, how do we relate to it? What does it, what does it say to us? What is it, well, how, do, how does it make us feel? And that to me is what, what, it, what this is all about. I think. That wraps it, sums it up right there. Yeah. All right, well, real quickly, we're gonna, we're gonna call on his talent here and then we're gonna let him go. But no, I understand you have um, some impressions that you can do for us, um, including yeah. Gordon Ramsay. Jesus. So, hang on. Here we go. Right, okay. Amazing. Fuck me. The spread that we've had all weekend, okay, has been amazing. I can't wait to come back to Iowa again. <laughs> Beautiful. Amazing. Incredible. Okay. Wow. Oh, my God. 
may, maybe we should ask for like, Gordon Ramsay sings Jolene to rhyme with Molly. <laughs> and it could be a whole string of things, right? Um, I believe you can do uh, Freddie Mercury. Or that's what oh, I was told. Oh, I mean, I, other than the audition, I don't know if I can. He's, he's quite, I mean, I can, I think I can do his strut, like the classic. Okay. It's more of a physical, well, hey, strut away. That's all right. Because this is what I did in the audition. So if you want to see like a, a wee sn Good, I think. <laughs> uh, any other ones you would care to share? Um, I think I can do your last president. He was <laughs> totally incredible. <laughs> beautiful. You're such beautiful people. Davenport, Iowa. <laughs> so beautiful. Happy to be here. <laughs> Very happy to be here. <laughs> How do we top that, right? Hey. Like I said, m mental health issues. <laughs> yeah, so. That's my closing question. What's been the hardest thing uh, for during the pandemic for you? I mean, because obviously you're in an industry that likes to be around people, seen by people. I mean, no, I mean, I, I, I think we, every, everyone is, is, is went through the same thing. I don't think you can, I don't think you can like single anyone out. I mean, so I mean, obviously, I mean, I, I, my, my heart bleeds for for uh, hospitality. Like bartenders and, and um, floor stuff, like like what like, killed them? Like, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, and I, again, I don't. I'm not. I'm not a politician. I've got no intention of ever being one. Uh, so the decision making, obviously, like I hope everything was done to save lives and like and and. I mean, we were we were totally on. I mean, we as a as a as a species were totally unprepared for something like this. And I and hopefully the lessons have been learned, and we 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 don't like like get that. We'll get into as much of a mess as as because and hopefully it's a wake up call as well um, that um, we, like we need to be prepared for whenever because obviously the weather is getting a lot worse all over the world. Um, and if, if, if when it comes to, uh, you know, a, a disease that is just wiped out, I don't know, was it like over f four million people worldwide have, have now passed, it's, that's, it's horrendous, it's, 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 hot, it's heartbreaking. And I just hope that the people in power, I hope they've woken up and d like do, do better to protect us. And, yeah. It's kind of like our uh, yeah. guest that we had this morning uh, with a Native American said, we need to remember to treat Mother Earth well. And Ab absolutely, yeah. absolutely, because there's, I don't know about you guys, but I'm not moving to Mars, <laughs> so. I'm too old to go to Mars, yeah, I don't yeah, want to go. Yeah. I remember Marvin the Martian and he's disturbing, <laughs> yes, so you know, yes. you're making me very <laughs> angry. <laughs> Oh my. Well, thanks for being such a great sport it's this been afternoon. My honor. It's been my honor. <laughs> Thank you for coming to visit what we consider the real part of America. Absolutely. The Absolutely. Midwest. We would love to have you back again. I can't wait. Yeah. Anytime. Right. Anytime. And uh, yeah, we want to keep working. Keep working. We've loved your work. We want to keep seeing you in different things. Absolutely. And I will, I'll keep you posted. Definitely, I yeah. Do. I will do. Deb's got a great network. She can get that information yes, out really yes. quick. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Debs, for having me. You are a queen. She is a queen, yes. yes. Thanks so much, Chris.
We'd like to thank Julie Terstrip for the interview.